Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Enterprise Connect 2016. Brought to you by Oracle ZDLRA, Vonage, and Cafe X. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Zontazanio. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here on the ground for special Enterprise Connect CUBE coverage. And I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Oracle ZDLRA, remember that name, ZDLRA, Zero Data Loss Recovery Appliance. That's Larry Ellison's pet project and he named it according to some of the Oracle folks. Thanks to Oracle. Uh, Cafe X and Vonage, without your support we wouldn't be here. This is theCUBE on the ground. I'm John Furrier with, with Jeff Fairbanks, who's with Bloomberg. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, pleasure to be here. So you're in the video space. You know where it has come from, where it is, and where it's going. And one of the most exciting thing is, video is everywhere. Video is on the phones, you got user-generated content, Snapchat's valuation is off the charts, all kinds of editing stuff happening within the software, much more interactive. You see what Facebook's doing with Oculus Rift mm -hmm. and virtual reality. We're moving from this broadcast model to a broadcast interaction engagement model. What's your thoughts? I, I think the bi-directional, first of all, you hit the nail on the head. The bi-directional uh, aspect of video is really, at a, in, in, it, it's in an infancy, but it's so exciting. The sense that the end user, the consumer, now actually is the producer, right? Can actually add content and add value and do that in a real meaningful way. Um, with, with high level of production value. If you look at the Netflix model, for example, where, where the, uh, the distributor is now creating the, creating the content off of the major broadcast networks, and then uh, third party independent firms can create their own content and publish that and get real real distribution for the first time uh, in, in modern history, it's, a, it's truly amazing. Yeah, yeah and the, new, the nuance about Netflix though too is that they started out selling, putting DVDs in the mail, right. now they're on the Amazon cloud, and now they have huge efficiencies. Yes, well, I mean, that's where you're, you're seeing the convergence of the IT space, the video space, the uh, unified communication space, where cloud isn't, you know, it, it, it's a catchphrase, it, you know, it's a catchphrase and it's a meaningful thing, but really it's actually, a, it's a tool that's enabling so many other, um, uh, what you would consider disparate uh, disparate organizations to come together and offer value to consumers and end users that, that was never possible before because of the scale. One of the things that we talk about when we do the cube because we look different, we act different, we actually program differently, but we actually are always thinking about production values. We were talking before you came on, and that's your wheelhouse. Production values mean something, and, yes. but they're changing. You mentioned the consumers now are part of the production process. Yes. So if you believe that we're all connected, and we are, mm -hmm. we're unifying, we're connected, we're internet of things, we're people, we're things too, they're part of the production process. So the question I have for you is, what is that production value when you include the crowd? Because you can't control it sometimes. Nope. How do you maximize that value? Well, I think I think that's that's really the engagement. The engagement of the audience is really where you find the value in the content. Uh, the the old model was I'm going to create the content. We're going to sample it through a few different people, and then that's what's go what's going to be consumed by the masses. Now the masses have a real genuine and, and, and uh, a say in the in the creation of the content and and um, the the deepness and uh, the breadth, the depth and breadth of the content. So that um, the ability for the for the for the end user for the consumer to tell, give direct feedback to the creator of the content um, via text, via you know, creating their own scripts, being able to, it almost goes back to, I don't know if you were young, you ever read the, the mystery books where you could pick the page to go to and then based on what you wanted the outcome to be, you could go yeah. to that, that, that's where we are, but in real life, in real time. It changes the clock on what you do on production because now you can't be consistent, you got to be ready and agile. Absolutely, no, no, the agility is the key. The agility is absolutely the key. One of the things we're looking at at, at, at Bloomberg and one of the things we're priding ourselves on is a video, video enabled platform where from a mobile device we can go out into the field, our news report can capture news stories themselves. No longer do I need a sat truck and a, and a, and a, um, uh, a videographer uh, to, go, to go with the reporter. We can embed them in very, you know, very precarious places and get real genuine stories off the ground uh, because of their ability to be, to be mobile and agile. Well, that's the job of the reporter. They're out in the trenches, kind of. We're here. They have phones. This camera's built in. It's right. got HD. And this so, microphone is amazing <laughs> now. You know what I mean? So this is a great example. The old way was that's not our workflow. Right. Now you can do anything, you can be agile. How are you guys doing that? Because that is a real challenge, because that is the unified communications in practice. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it, it speaks to the various mediums that we're in, right? We're in radio, we're in television, we're in print news. So we're in all the, the, the major traditional news uh, uh, venues, but we're constantly expanding our, our, online, uh, our online presence. We're constantly reaching out and asking for content from our, our uh, our, our consumers, uh, we're constantly interviewing, we're, we're doing what you're doing, I mean, this is a great example, right? You're able to, to be on the ground, 
with the with the people in the industry making a difference and you're able to ask people at the very at the very inception of great ideas i mean you're sitting on the floor of a place where conversations happen and new ideas spark and you're there capturing that that was something that the traditional news uh, media model could never have been able to do in a real substantive way and you got things like twitter which are in the moment communication vehicles you got facebook which is like your living room you got linkedin for your job resume all these social networks are now there's going to be a zillion more you i'm sure you guys have a social network uh, yeah, no absolutely we, we do and we we, we take uh, we take advantage of the, the ones that exist uh, currently now, whether, whether it be LinkedIn or whether it be Twitter. Uh, I mean, what we're seeing on the social media side and what we're seeing in the, in, in the industry is um, no longer uh, do we as a broadcaster have the dominance in the conversation. Right? The dominance of the conversation was the broadcast. The broadcaster des decides who's on television and what the what the degree the content is going to be, or the sponsors decide what degree or what avenue the content's going to uh, uh, travel down. No more, no more. Um, and so it's truly a marketplace of ideas where the best ideas, the most insightful ideas, the most exciting ideas come to the surface and there's nothing that can stop it. That's what makes it so amazing. And that's a great point. That's also the competitive advantage opportunity because the best ideas win if the people aren't getting what they like. They can always go somewhere because there's competition. Exactly, and I mean, and that, I mean, without being overly patriotic, that's the brilliance of the American model, right? It, it is truly a consumer-based economy where the consumer wins and and the best product does, you know, rise to the top. But I mean, um, you know, you hit the nail right on the head, and and and, you know, I'll I'll leave with this. The where we are right now. Um, is such a pivotal, and you know, we, we can always say this every year after yeah. year, right? But where we are right now is such a pivotal uh, concern because for the first time, I think, in, in, in the history of the world, right? You as an individual person, I as an individual person, can distribute our message to the masses. You had the Gutenberg printing press, right? You could print, but you had to be able to read to be able to consume that content. Now with video, it doesn't matter what language, it doesn't matter you know, uh, what, what age, it doesn't matter how much money, the, the, the barrier to entry is at a, at a price point where just about everyone can participate, and that's truly a democracy of, of ideas, and that's when the best ideas and the advancement of, of humanity you know, can, can happen, is when, the, when, when everyone's voice can be heard. We've had Matt on from Bloomberg, and, and to add to that first time in the history of the world effect is now you can measure everything. So yes. not only can you broadcast to the masses, the advertisers who in the past was 50% of my advertisers was wasted, I just don't know which half. Well, right now you can measure everything. Every and this is the beautiful thing. You can measure it, and you can understand it. The consumers are now involved. It's a complete model that's been flipped on its head. So it's a really amazing thing. It's and a virtuous, it's a virtuous cycle. So I got to ask you the question about this event. We're at Enterprise Connect. This is the central show around unified communications. And I'm just going to say it. There's a bunch of old companies here that have been around doing unified communications. You know, PBX is the voice over IP. And you know, I interviewed Vonage, great company. And they disrupted the voice over IPs, the, the telcos, the incumbents, the ILEX. Mm -hmm. And they, they kicked ass on residential. Now they're going and just doing the same thing. Right. Then, but you, but you got to be competitive. There's going to be carnage yes. on the dead bodies if people don't adapt over this new world. And now unified communications for the first time that I've seen at, with mass scale is shifting to a really, really explosive opportunity for growth. Meaning chat, video, voice, software, mobile, cloud, all coming together at mm -hmm. one time right now. Do you agree with that? And if you do, what, do you, what would you share and add color to that on why this industry is going to transform? No, I, I, I agree with it whole, uh, whole, wholeheartedly. I think that um, w what I see in some of the legacy players and even some of the big players that are, that are, that are dabbling in all the spaces that, that, was, that you just mentioned, my concern is around what we just talked about, customization and being driven by the, by the end user, by the client, by the customer. I'm seeing, in the, especially in the cloud space, that there are, uh, there's, there's some big players that are offering these great tools, um, and they're saying, "Here, take it as it is." And yeah, we've got APIs, but when you read, the, when you look at the API library, it's not that deep. And when you look at the SDK, uh, you know, availability, it's not that deep. Or well, the documentation is half complete. Or, or the documentation <laughs> is half complete. Half of it's because it's such a moving target, but the other half is because it isn't fully baked. And what we will find is what I will, you know, what I truly believe, and what we will find in the industry is that. Uh, what I want and what you want could be two fundamentally different things, and the idea that one size fits all no longer applies because I have the ability to go and do it myself, or to find a smaller player or more agile player to do it myself. So, so being the big dog in the room 
doesn't matter. General anymore. purpose software is not going to work anymore. Nope. And, I mean, what the iPhone did that was revolutionary, and Peter Burris works for our team, quote, uh, coined this back when it came out, was it's a, it's a computer that has software that make, allows you to make telephone calls. And that essentially yes. wasn't about the phone call. Right. It was about right. the computer and the apps that happens to run phone calls. Well, that was a revolution of the iPhone. Yeah, and, 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 and to further that, the, the idea is that it's a platform that, that uh, you know, Apple didn't say, okay, we're going to make every aspect of the ecosystem for this device. Rather, we're going to let developers go off and develop how, how they want, what, what tools and resources they want, and we'll just use this as the, the jump off point, the platform, the medium to which you can consume those various apps. Apple didn't go and make uh, you know, uh, a, a, a Compass app, right? There are 300 other independent little guys in, in, the, in their yeah. garages that made Compass apps. And you as a consumer can say, you know what, I like Compass app 127, but I don't like 128. And that freedom, that ability to consume exactly what you want. 100 billion out. downloads on the Apple App Store. 100 billion, that quote, I saw that quote from Apple. This is the revolution, and this is the thing, general purposes get. So here's the final question. What advice do you have for startups out there um, that are the new disruptors. There's a new class of disruptors coming out. And the big guys are also evolving, so I'll have a two-part question. For the startups coming in, integrating into the enterprise, which is mm. consumerization now, how do they compete? What do they got to do to be successful? And how do the big guys need to adapt? So the small guys, uh, by, you know, by the very nature of being small, they're, they're more able to be uh, guided towards whatever direction, especially if you're a larger enterprise and you can kind of, like a Bloomberg, we can kind of push our influence down on, on, those, on those smaller firms. But the ability to stay agile, kind of following the almost the Salesforce model of, there really isn't any piece of customization. If you go to Salesforce, right, you're buying a, a frame and you can pretty much plug in whatever you, <laughs> you want into that frame, right? Same thing um, on, on the smaller side. The large guys, they need to get out of the way of themselves. If they, if if uh, if you have a large firm that's completely focused on the revenue stream from legacy systems, and they don't want to cannibalize that revenue stream, so they 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 they, um, they don't advance great ideas, or they don't advance you know trends because they're worried about what's going to do their existing revenue streams, they're going to constantly fail because the speed, the cycle, right, the um, the, uh, the 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 business cycle of of uh, of innovation, that cycle. It's shrinking, smaller and smaller. It's faster You're and faster. You're going to be faster and more relevant. And and so trying to trying to, to, to have a cash cow in the, in this industry is, it will not work. It will not work. You, you've got to you've got to stay agile and stop worrying about your legacy systems and start worrying about what you're doing now. So final question: this, this digital distribution digital distribution concept or digital transformation mm -hmm. is real, true or false? It is real. It is. All right, we are here at Bloomberg. Production values, real influence, digitization, the crowd is in control. Of course, the media has changed, it's all unifying. We're at theCUBE, unifying it all here on the ground. Thanks for watching. Thank you.